Welcome back everybody, I am Karex and we are continuing on this beginner playthrough as the Ottomans and we are at war right now with Albania and Venice although we have successfully been able to beat back um, well I guess we're the aggressor so we're not beating anything back we have been able to successfully charge down some of the Venetian lands and sort of devastate some of their land which is really good we're sieging down Corfu right now uh, Byzantium is winning their war against Venice. It'll be interesting to see if Byzantium actually takes land, like if they take this land for themselves. I wonder, no, it doesn't look like Athens or Byzantium have claims on any of it, but it'd be interesting to see if they could actually expand their own empire by winning this war. We don't really necessarily want them to win the war themselves, we just don't want them to lose the war. We kind of would like it just to kind of end in a white peace, to be honest. So we might end up actually starting the war against Constantinople, beating them up and having it all kind of like you know, end in just a, in a, in a truce between Byzantium and, and Venice and, and allow us to get what we want without strengthening either, either of our enemies, right? Looks like we've built up enough of a spy network with Genoa to be able to get a claim. We can actually get the claim out here. This is a very important trade center. It's also next to Crimea, so we'll have the option to be able to attack there. We could take a look at our... It's been a few years, so we could take a look and see how the progress is going with our rebellions. Looks like we are at 60% here with Kandar separatists. And we're at 50% with the Crimean Separatists. Not a big deal, not worried about that. It's still going to be a while. It's going to turn red. When that becomes more of a big deal, it's going to turn red at 80%. That'll give us a good heads up that it's going to be time to uh, to deal with it. So we're doing okay right now. Looks like we're making money at war. Part of that is because we have war reps going, right? We're, or we're paying for... Oh, sorry. We are getting war reps from, uh, from Luca, which is a small amount of money. We're getting some spoils of war. But we're also getting war taxes. That's what I meant to say. We did activate war taxes so that every every um, every month we're paying a little bit of military power to save a little bit of money on our on our military, and that's making a big difference in our economy right now. So that's good. That's good. We're not losing money because we do have a loan out, so we're already in debt a little bit. One thing that just happened is our really amazing historical general has died, and we need to roll more generals so we can go to our military tab. And we can come down here and we can start recruiting generals. And this is based on our army tradition. We have a 34, which is much higher than we were at the beginning of the game. So I feel good about that. Um, but we can roll this general. Now, the interesting thing is, there was actually something we could do with our... Uh, to make the generals cost less, right? There was something over here in the nobility to make the generals cost less. This makes the general cost minus 25%. But it reduces, there's a one-time hit to army tradition. So our generals wouldn't roll as well, but they'd be cheaper. So it kind of just depends, do we want to roll a couple of generals now and then activate this? I think we do. Over time, this will build more army tradition by reducing the tradition decay. So that's really, really good. Um, so we do want to do that eventually, but I think for now we're going to take advantage of this higher army tradition that we built up by winning battles. And we're going to roll this at least one time and hope to get somebody good. It says down here that it could be anywhere between... Four and ten pips. So if we get ten pips here, it's like booyah. Uh, we got six. That's not bad. D good seizure, right? Two siege pips. Not very good on the shock or the maneuver, but better than nothing. I wouldn't mind rolling this one more time, to be honest. But it does cost a lot of military power to do that, right? Military power is precious. We're also spending some of that military power on the war rep or the sorry, I keep saying war reps, but I mean war taxes that we're funding um, or that we're in. in you know, that we're adding. <sighs> this is in the hills. We're going to get a benefit because we're going to be... These guys have no shock. They have a six fire general, but guess what? At the beginning of the game without cannons, when you don't have cannon technology, fire is not very important. I think we assign this guy, we win this battle, and then we activate that estate change. Yeah, that's a decisive battle right there. Decisive battle against the Venetians. Um, yeah, that was uh, not good for them. We can continue to siege down their land and just put a little bit more pressure and more score on them and make them a little bit more sort of willing to piece out of this deal. Looks like all of our ships are damaged and repairing right now. What I'd like to do is I'd actually like to get our leader, right, our siege general who's now really good at sieging. It'd be kind of nice to have him help with Corfu, but Corfu's being... We can't actually do Corfu right now. Emperor's enacting some reforms. That's kind of scary, in a sense. 
Um, these guys are black flagged because it looks like this is land that's actually occupied by Byzantium. We've moved on to land that's occupied by Byzantium. Comet has been sighted. It's an omen, unfortunately. I wish we lived in more enlightened times. We are going to lose stability because we saw a comet. Everybody's freaking out. There was a comet. And the, the end is nigh. In fact, whoa, a lot of the Venetians are actually over here. What the heck? Huge Venetian fleet over here. That's quite dis... It'd be interesting to ambush this one over here, right? To sneak our navy around, sneak around, ambush these guys here. And we could actually try to take advantage of the fact there's a little bit of separation between this navy and this navy. This could be really, really good for us. And in addition to the fact that we are... Um, oh, it looks like the Serbs are actually coming down. Oh, beautiful. Good job. Good job, Serbia. Good job. Serbia is coming in here and wiping out some Venetian troops there. Very nice. Okay, it looks like we can raise some inflation. So here's the interesting thing. It says we can raise inflation. If we go to our economy tab, we can see we have um, a little bit of inflation. You get inflation by taking a lot of, like, taking on money when you win wars. Like, if you just get a big influx of cash, you get some inflation from that. Um, you get inflation when you basically have a lot of money that's coming in from gold mines. Like, we don't have any gold, but we know that there's some gold over here in Kaza, uh, Kosovo um, in Serbia. So in Serbia is actually probably getting a lot of inflation too. And inflation literally just makes it so everything costs more. I mean, like, it, it's not good. If you have a lot of inflation, just everything, like your entire economy is just weakened and crippled because of that inflation. So we don't really want to add inflation, but here's the interesting thing. We can, we can actually push inflation down for 75 administrative power. In fact, we can reduce inflation by 2% for 75 administrative power. That's one of the, we're learning new things that these powers can do because of events, right? This, is, this event is telling us that we can spend administrative power to reduce inflation by 2%. This is only adding half a percent of inflation. It's actually cost effective for us to take the administrative power now and do with what we want with it, do what we want with it. And then if inflation ever goes up to 2%, we could just pay 50, the 50 we just earned and 25 more and get it down much more significantly than that. So we don't need to take caution there. We, we will... And bring on the inflation. Bring on the inflation. We're at 21% down here with the siege. We are. I didn't even really expect to be like sort of de-sieging or sieging the uh, the guys here, but we might as well. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm splitting the army, right? And I'm the the army on the left. The army you start with is always the one with the general. All I'm trying to do is get a single stack of a thousand troops with our general with the two sieger. Move them onto here because he's going to help the siege increase right now we're at a two percent uh, 28 percent from where we were a seven percent a second ago we can move towards legalism again we said we wanted to be working on legalism that's good i want these ships to be like ready to go looks like they are all repaired let's do this thing let's sneak over here and see if we can sneak attack these guys because we see half of the venetian fleet is over here are they going to come to reinforce <gasps> they actually snuck they actually sort of went in here this is interesting, though, because what we can do now is we can come up this way, beat up these 7,000, and actually move. We can potentially actually move on Venice. Especially if this falls, this could be really, really good. But Venice is going to have to get their ships back here pronto. And I don't know if they will or not. They might be scared. We might be too strong at this point. 49% for the siege. I'm excited for this to fall because then we might actually be able to attack Venice proper there. That would be kind of cool. Corfu has fallen. Beautiful. We can move across this now as much as we want because we both we own both sides of it. So we can't move across here because the Venetians controlled this sea, but now we control this area with our ships. Oh, I just thought of something. I don't know if we actually need to fight that. I actually don't know if we need to fight that. Let's let's see if we can peace out Venice. Let's see if we can just peace them out. Alternatively, we can take these ships and we can kind of come down here and see if we can beat these guys up. Caught them that time. They had nowhere to go. They have a really good admiral, but we are disintegrating them. We've lost a couple of our ships, but they lost more. We captured one, too. We captured one. Let's pursue. Okay, it looks like they sort of got us there. I wonder if Serbia would actually help us here. Serbia, will you help us engage? No, they're scared to attack. 
Makes sense. Venetians have a good general there. There is a straight crossing. There's a huge penalty for crossing a straight and attacking across the straight. Huge penalty. So we don't really want to do that. Um, instead, I think what we want to do is we want to peace out Venice. They're at low enthusiasm. We have 60% with them. Let's get Venice out of here. We can humiliate them because they are a rival. That's really, really good for a number of reasons. We can have them pay us a bunch of money. In fact, they'll pay us a bunch of money. They'll give us a ton of money. The only thing I'm worried about here is the fact that if we undo this war, um, it could be that Venice, it could be that Byzantium ends up getting a lot more powerful from this. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to play Peacemaker by attacking Byzantium and forcing them not to take anything from Venice. Corfu would be interesting, but that's 20 war score. This would also be kind of interesting to take. That is even more war score. Holy cow. Part of this is because it's unjustified demands. We can't demand war from Venice. One, we don't have claims on this land. Like, it costs more to take this land. It costs us diplo points. It costs us a lot of aggressive expansions from overextension. Not enough to scare us, right? But we're going to be taking the land from Albania. So we're taking mostly non-aggressive things from Venice. We're humiliating them. That's going to give us more power projection, actually. That's also going to actually have factor into our age goals. We haven't talked about age goals yet. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. One of the things you could do when you beat up your rivals, basically, if you don't want any overextension, aggra aggressive expansion, or to to um, to pay Diplo, you can just humiliate them. It's a huge amount of prestige for us. It reduces... Uh, actually, I don't know if it actually does give us prestige. It, it basically reduces... It gives us power projection. This is essentially what we're doing by doing this, is we're getting power projection. We're also completing one of our uh, one of our age, age of Discovery goals. We'll talk about this in a second, but it says Humiliate Arrival. It's one of our goals. We haven't actually mentioned this. If we can get over 50 power projection, we'll actually be earning more Monarch points per month. So if we can get 30 more, that means we'll be at 65. That's well more than 50, right? That's a really, really, really good thing. There's actually a couple other things that we haven't done yet um, that we should be doing probably. Um, to, to boost up our monitor, our power projection to, to maximize that for those extra benefits and stuff. Because we could see even otherwise, right? We could just look at this. Morale of armies, that's really good. Yearly prestige, that's good. Yearly legitimacy, global trade power, this is all really good stuff. So more is going to be better, and that's what we're doing. We're stealing power projection from Venice by humiliating them. Not really stealing it, we're generating it for, it, it for ourselves. But we're taking war reparations. Venice will pay us 10% of their income. It's probably pretty high. They're also just going to give us 326 ducats because, well, they got a lot of money. And we're going to take a lot of money from them. Beautiful, beautiful. We could pay off that loan now. So I'm just going to go here and pay it off. Repay loan. Great. Repay. There we go. Because we had a big amount of sort of just cash. This is perfect. We got these 18,000 troops. Let's get them home, guys. Let's get them home. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. And let's send our other diplomat to make peace with Albania. Where Albania, we can take the money that they have. That's a little bit of inflation. We talked about how we were gaining inflation by taking money. We probably took a decent amount of inflation by taking that from Venice. I'm curious, actually. Let's look that up. Yeah, we took about 0.3% uh, inflation. That's fine. That's fine. It's usually worth it to take their money anyways. And we could just buy down the inflation if it ever becomes a problem. So we are removing Albania from the map. We're taking these two bits into our country. The cool thing is... The cool thing is... Albania, we do not need to core this. This land is inherently ours. There's no notifier up here to say we have uncored land. This is ready. This is this this is happy. It's there's no unrest here. There's no autonomy here. This is land that is being rightfully reunited with our country. Of course, we stole this from the Albanians. Like they wanted to be independent. I'm not saying the people here are that happy, but I'm saying diplomatically and administrative from an administrative perspective and a diplomatic perspective, all is right with the world. We've taken back land that was rightfully ours. We're going to come down here and get ready to beat up Byzantium because that's kind of what's next. We, ooh, we're at speed four right now. Let's reduce that just a touch. It looks like this has gone red. Our, our agent was discovered in Genoa. Our agent was discovered. I'm just going to leave it there for a little bit because I want to keep kind of building up that spy network. It's going to go down to zero and then it's going to restart again. So I'm just going to leave that agent there and just kind of keep working on this. We, have, we can invest in new technologies. Banner just popped up. Let's go through our banners really quick. We have a diplomatic thing. There's a neighbor bonus. Great. Let's do that. There's only a 3% penalty for institutions. I'm going to sneak this in now early. and While well, we can. We can sneak this in as well. This is going to cost us um, a little bit less than the 600 normal cost because of other modifiers. But we don't get a neighbor bonus for this, which is kind of a bummer. 
it's usually nice to wait for a neighbor bonus if we can, which is a 5% bonus. But again, every year it's going up by 1%, but it's likely that someone within the next few years will probably get that. So we'll be able to get a neighbor, neighbor bonus. In fact, we're actually getting close to the point where it's almost time to get military. It's time to get military tech five. That 0% right here means that we're not ahead of time. We are in the right time to get military tech five. If we click on other countries, we might find some that have mil tech five potentially. Potentially. Maybe not. It might still be a little bit early. Yeah, definitely not England. There's reasons why England won't have mil tech five, but but there could be countries in the world right now that already have military tech five, basically is what that's telling us. But they're not our neighbors, that's for sure. So we could get this military, but I'm going to wait a little bit to see if we can get a little bit of a discount by having one of our neighbors get it first. Um, actually, no, we're losing innovativeness because of that, so let's just do it now. Let's just do it now. In fact, actually, we have a neighbor that might have Diplotech 5. I don't know. I'm not sure what that's telling us, to be honest. We can make some additional states. Looks like Crimea actually could be a state. This is a this is an area that could be a state. And we know we want to take a lot of this land. In fact, actually, this little country, Theodora, what's going on with them? What's going on with this little purple country here? They're in a trade league with Genoa. They're allied to Genoa. But presumably, if we took, we, we might want to take this land to unify this state. This is like an administrative body, right? So if we make this into a state, here's the thing. Let's look at Crimea here really quick. They're at 90% autonomy. Holy cow, we haven't talked about autonomy. But this reduces the taxation by 90%. This reduces the military manpower by 90%. The production by 90%. I mean, this is just all sorts of terrible. All sorts of terrible. Like, this province is doing nothing for us. We took Crimea. It's doing nothing for us besides being a strategic province. And it is being very strategic for us. And this is very useful for us. Very good for us. However, if we want this to actually reduce, significantly reduce this autonomy, we need to make this into a state rather than a territory. This is a territory right now. If we go to our stability here, we can see that we have one territory. It's Crimea. So we can increase a little bit of a maintenance cost here to make this into a state by, by going to the Crimean state here. We can make this into a state. It's going to cost a little bit of additional uh, uh, maintenance, basically. It's going to cost us uh, a little bit more, but we should. it's going to cost us 0 0.17, but we should be able to make significantly more money from Crimea Let's see if this updates. Why is this at 90%? It says it's a territory. Oh, because we haven't stated it yet. Yeah. So we have to spend administrative power to, to, to actually finish the core. So we paid what was called a, um, basically a territory core, but we didn't pay the state core. Now that doesn't cause overextension, having territory cores, but we still want to do that in order to get this to actually go to its real autonomy, which looks to be about 47%. So this should be a lot more beneficial to us now, it's significantly, right? I mean, if we were only getting 10% of its value, now we're getting 50-something percent of its value. So this should be six times as, as valuable to us. We're making significantly more state income now um, with that, and it's only going to increase as this autonomy goes down. As it continues to trend downwards, slowly per month, the autonomy will go down. So autonomy within your states can go to 0%. It can trend down to 0% and be completely, like these, these states right here are completely useful. Like 100% like of their value is contributing to our centralized government, our centralized nation. But this one, not so much. We're only getting about 50% of its value for now, and that's going to that's gonna change over time. It's going to go down over time, which is good. The uh, Kandar um, separatists are ready to uh, sort of uh, build up here. Now, the interesting thing is there's a couple things we can do about this. This just went red. It just went to 80%. Okay, So there's a 9% chance that it'll gain 10% progress next month. And then it'll have to gain 10% more progress. And once it hits 100%, boom, rebellion. In fact, it tells us right here. This is good. Learning a little bit about the uh, learning a little bit about the actual unrest here. I'm going to grab 2,000 dudes, right? I joined these two armies. There was a couple little armies just sitting here, 17,000 guys, disorganized. I'm going to grab 2,000 of these guys, okay? I'm going to grab 2,000 of these guys and make this into a group of 20. And there's a reason for this. I'm going to make a stack of 20 troops here, and we're going to talk about this for a second. So unrest. Unrest. It's We see how it slowly builds up in 10% increments. The provinces that are affected by this cause, right, the separatists that believe in this cause, can exist in multiple provinces, and they all add together for a sort of a, a total unrest factor. But 
they have to make progress on the rebellion. The rebellion has to build in increments of 10%. So right now it's slowly building. There's a there's an eight a nine percent chance that it'll increase every month. It's estimating that about two years we can expect this rebellion to occur. There's multiple things we can do to handle this. Okay. In fact, it even gives us some information about how many provinces are part of the rebellion and how many total troops we expect to rise up. And these troops usually rise up in the higher development provinces. So if we click on these two provinces, we could see this one here. We, I'm just remembering, right? There is an unrest map mode, which is kind of hard to see because the unrest is only 5% here. It's not like super, super high. So it's still kind of green-ish, but it's yellow, right? This is yellow, these are green, this is yellow. So if we look here, this is where the unrest is for the, and we just remember, right? We just remember that this once upon a time, this was Kandar, right? And we conquered that. That's the timeline taking us back to 1444. So we just conquered this land. The timeline is just a cool thing to let us see what the world looked like at the start of the game and how things have changed, right? And how things have changed. So for us, the only thing that's really changed is Albania is gone and Kandar is gone. And we've been able to expand our borders a little bit. If we looked at other countries, we could see how they maybe have changed over time. Going on to the unrest thing. The unrest is a really, really smart system. There's so many different things we can do to manage this. So we know that unrest is coming. It's coming fast. It's going to be 8,000 dudes. We can just prepare for that. We can just take our troops, stand them over here, and get ready to fight this rebellion, these 8,000 troops. That's, to be fair, it's almost more of a nuisance. I hate to say it, but the Kandar separatists... It just, there isn't enough development. There isn't enough people that truly feel this way to overtake the Ottoman military might. You know what I mean? When these guys spawn up on us, we will actually be able to crush these guys. I hate to say it, but uh, unfortunately, um, these 8,000 are not going to get their way. But they're going to try to fight to get their way, right? So, so these are 8,000 hostile troops that are about to rise up that we will be able to fight. We will be able to fight them. And same with the Crimeans. There's going to be 8,000 dudes popping up in Crimea as well. But if we hit this button to handle them, we have some additional options. We can just accept their demands. Be like, you know what? Fine. You guys, Kandar wants to become a free nation. We'll just accept their demands. You're a free nation. Go away. And they're obviously not going to rise up if we give them what they want. This is obviously a bad option. We took this land because we want this land. We don't want to do that. It's saying we can boost stability, right? So if we can lower our total unrest, if we can actually remove the unrest then that gets rid of the rebellion. And one of the means of doing that, sometimes if it's like 1% or 2%, sometimes just raising your stability can actually be, a, be an effective means of actually sort of bumping that down by increasing your national unrest or your, your positive national unrest modifiers by removing the negatives here, like war exhaustion. Holy cow, if we got rid of this war exhaustion, which we can't afford right now because that costs diplomatic power, we have 3% national unrest coming from this war exhaustion. If we got rid of that, there'd be 3% less unrest in these zones. And then you combine that with some added stability and some other things and some other changes, you might be able to actually get rid of that unrest altogether. And it can just go away. These people can just be like, fine, you've done enough to help us. And, and we see that the Ottoman Empire is stable and it's happy and the people there are happy and we don't mind joining up. You can convince these people it's not really worth fighting for. But there's not enough people to really build support for that cause. Um... But the other thing we do is we can actually provoke the rebellion. So we can actually increase the size of the rebellion, but we could just provoke it by just saying, okay, guys, come on. You guys want to fight us? Let's fight. And if we get our troops in position here, we can actually do that so that we can quicken it up. Instead of just randomly waiting for this to go to 100%, we can actually be like, no, guys, let's go. Let's get this done. We can provoke the rebellion. That's a new feature. Really, really cool, though. New feature with the last patch. Super, super awesome. Provoking the rebellion. Super awesome. So you don't have to just wait around and hope they rebel. Because sometimes if we get these troops in position over here, we might want them to hurry up and rebel so that we can move on with our with our Ottoman lives, you know what I mean? The other thing we can do is we can do harsh treatment. We can spend military power to actually push down the rebellion by 30%. So this, this um, 80% here, if we're in war and we're on like fighting on the western front over here and these guys are threatening to rebel, it could be really annoying to actually bring troops back to deal with that. We might want to frantically go in here, do harsh treatment, and just basically push down their progress, right? Destroy their progress by spending military points to push down their progress. So these are different ways we can do with it. We can just wait for them to, to uh, spawn and fight them. We can provoke them, fight them. We can uh, accept their demands. We can um, harsh treatment them to sort of just push down their progress. 
The final thing we're going to be able to do is, and what I'm actually gearing up for now, is combining these troops, and you can actually just sit on the provinces. You can reduce the unrest in the provinces just by sitting on them with troops. It doesn't take any military power. It's just basically you just calm the area by, by having your army just hanging out there. So we're in, in the maximum amount of troops that we can do to do this is 20,000. Is 20,000. So if we get these troops over here, we're going to notice, and, and each troop is 0.25% of an unrest. So the reason why I'm grouping up 20,000, because one, this is the maximum amount of negative unrest that we can gain by planting armies here. If we put 40,000 here, it won't do anything. The 21st regiment won't do anything. But if I put these guys here, we notice that these guys are at 5% unrest. Well, guess what? Guess what? This is actually very fitting here. If we go here, I guess it's not going to update between the months, but we can actually, uh, we basically, once this kicks in, once these friendly troops kick in, it'll actually reduce this by negative five. And that will push it to zero. We can actually get rid of this rebellion without even fighting it by just having these troops loitering in this area. Now there's two provinces, so that's kind of a problem, right? Influence spreading, that's not good. We'll have to figure that out. Um, so how do we do that? Well, they've added a new system. They've added a new system where you can do manage autonomous rebel suppression. So we can actually suppress in the entire state with these 20,000 troops. So we could just sort of automate this process, which is really cool. So these guys are going to be reducing not just in the province they're sitting in, but the entire state, the entire state that they're in is going to get reduced, which is really, really cool. There we go. Gone. The unrest is gone. It's grayed out. It's zero. There's no unrest in these individual provinces anymore. The progress is still there. So if we leave too quickly, then it'll stay, it'll re rejoin. But right now it is gone. It is gone. This unrest is going away. It's ticking away. Now the Crimeans are a little bit more unhappy, right? 6.5%. They're a little bit more unhappy, but it's still only one province. So it's taking longer for this to build up. This thing is about five years away. We could use these 20,000 dudes to slow them down significantly, right? If we stood these 20,000 over here in Crimea, it wouldn't go away completely, but the rate of change would be reduced so much that it would probably not be likely to actually occur. Um, actually, when we get rid of this war exhaustion, we're letting the game run really quick. We're going to take care of this event really quick. There's a few events popping up on us. But basically what I'm trying to say is with combined with the war exhaustion reduction that's, that's adding to this unrest in Crimea and standing the troops on here, we can get rid of Crimean separatists as well. So we'll be able to get rid of these separatists just by actually standing our army there. And just basically sort of just easing the area with our army. Okay. Ambitions of the um, Sultan here. Um, local construction costs, local development costs. Very good. So this is in a particular state, it looks like. Or we could just get, you know, let's just get some administrative power. Rather than worrying about building things. I don't know if we really have anything to build right now. Economy is still a little shaky. And uh, we haven't really got too many technologies that have, that directly tie into building new things. So this is, there's, there's a quarantine um, suggestion. We, there's, there's some influence of it's spreading here. And we can quarantine this entire region, or we could just hope it goes away magically. Typically, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but usually the nasty option is the best option. Quarantine is usually the best option there. So we are going to quarantine that. We're going to let this sort of just wait a few months for that to sort of go away. Then we're going to actually need to beat up oh, Venice is at peace. Wait a second. What happened? Albania exists. Again. <laughs> Albania exists again. They gave so so Byzantium won the war. They didn't take this province, but they released Naxus. Naxus is an independent nation now. An independent nation has joined the Tr Genoan Trade League. So we could try to actually attack them without actually having to interfere with, with Byzantium. It looks like also that um, Serbia actually got a province from Venice. And it looks like Albania actually got a province from Venice. So Venice has actually been cut down in the region, which is kind of interesting. But Venice still has a lot of their core areas here, like Corfu. And they have this province and they have this province. So Venice is still in the area, but they've lost a lot of their power, actually. Holy cow, that's kind of insane. That's kind of insane. All right, this is going away. After this is gone... Um, 
Actually, we probably don't even need to wait for this to go away entirely. I think it's going to be time to go to war with Byzantium, guys. Byzantium is allied to Serbia. It'd be interesting if they got the alliance with Albania, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen completely. Where's our navy right now, actually? What is that doing? Standing up here doing absolutely nothing? Okay, come back here, guys, and get, get, get repaired. Because there's going to be war against Byzantium. Byzantium has a pretty, pretty good fleet. We can get a new military technology. That's going to give us a new... Um, army unit. So it's going to give us a new army unit. That's good. We want to get that again before the renaissance penalty gets too high. But at this point, we might not... Now we're 12 years ahead of time on military technology. So 12... And of course, we don't have the points for it anyways. But we're going to need to wait 12 years to get another one. But at that point, the institution penalty is going to be so high that we're going to want to deal with that in a different way. Most likely. This unrest is going away. Now, if we step off of this province, there will be unrest, but because the war exhaustion is going down too, it's probably not going to be a significant amount of unrest. And we've we've undone so much of their work. It would take so many more multiple years for them to rebel. And the thing is, a lot of the reason for them to rebel is going to be going away over time. That separatism modifier that makes them really eager to rebel when we take over their land, that modifier is going to go down every year. It's going to be reduced every year by half. So eventually there just won't be any desire here for them to, to secede anymore. So let's get these. These guys are done. They're done. The rebellion here with Kandar is gone. Now it's going to try to build up again, right? It's going to actively try to build up again here, but it's saying it's going to take 20... Let's see at the, end of the, at the end of the month here when it updates. It's going to take 13 years. That's a long time. We can easily go to war with Byzantium before we have to worry about that too much. A little bit worried about the Crimeans. They're, they're going to be popping up a little bit sooner, but it should be okay. War exhaustion is still going down for now until we actually attack Byzantium. Byzantium has lowered their morale of their troops. Or maybe they just got a new military tech too. I don't know. What happened? Why are their troops so low morale? I think we need to get here. and We're going to be attacking Byzantium, I think, very quickly here. We have troops set up to actually sort of buffer against Serbia, and we're ready. We're about to be ready to actually go into Constantinople. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode.